Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and as you all know, this is Big Bob, and in really any sort of scenario, this would be considered a really big truck. But we really have something today that makes this look like, well, this it makes this look comparable to the size of a Ford Ranger when you park it next to the truck in question. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. And we actually have the supplies bed on it today, which is really cool because you've got extra supplies, you've got a spare wheel and tire, you've got just about everything you need to support a mission out in the wilderness. But as we get a little bit closer to our objective, let's see if you guys can spot the rig in question. Because once it comes into view, it will be very, very clear why I said what I said. Y'all see it yet? Y'all see it yet? There it is. So that is the LARC Bertha. Now, that thing is so incredibly huge that it doesn't really, like, it doesn't really put it in perspective until you park right next to it. So, Big Bob, Bertha. Big difference. Bertha's tires are literally the size of Big Bob. So, let me just, like, show you guys in free cam what this comparison actually looks like. It is absolutely ridiculous. Parking Big Bob next to that. Big Bob looks like nothing next to that thing. It's so incredibly ginormous that when you're in it and you're in the first person view, it doesn't even feel real. It feels like you're driving a building. Now, to further prove my point, we're going to go back into this thing and we're actually going to swap over to Bertha now. Let me just go ahead and climb up the ladder to get in the thing. And we're going to fire it up. Now, once we've fired it up, that will allow us to actually lower the ramp. And the ramp will allow us to bring trucks and other cargo inside it. Now, before we actually do that, hang on. Let's actually put this thing in a slightly more vehicle-friendly position. And what I mean by that is, let's make sure that the bottom of the ramp is basically level with the rest of the ground. So as we back up real quick, there we go, there we go. That should be usable. We should be in a doable position. Let's go ahead and activate the ramp, bring it down, and stop the engine and swap trucks. Now, one of my biggest things is, oh, yo, that ramp isn't even on the ground. That ramp isn't even on the ground. That's how big this is. That's how big this monstrosity of a vehicle. It's not the monstrosity, but it is a monstrosity of a vehicle. And we were able to get the truck up. Come on. Dude, it's like rock crawling just to get up in the thing. And when you're up in here, you have room for a little bit more. I don't think a twin steer would fit, but it would be very, very, very close. Let's see if we can fit one more vehicle. So we've got that thing all the way up against the edge. Whatever else we put in here is going to have to be quite short. Now, I don't know what the best thing for that is going to be. Definitely not something like an MK38 or actually the Luxington 82. The little tiny Hilux. That will actually, that should actually fit really well. I see no reason why that wouldn't fit. I genuinely see absolutely no reason why that wouldn't fit. So, we're not really going to do anything else to it. We're just going to go ahead and... That's not what I wanted to do. But, we're going to go ahead and get into it and drive it. And see if we can fit this little guy up inside the transport. Oh, no! Oh, are you stuck underneath it? Oh, come on! Now, some of you may be thinking, wait a minute. This body of water isn't going to be suitable because the, the tires are never going to be off the ground. That's not fully correct. Now, there are a lot of areas of this particular lake where the wheels will touch the ground. However, all the way out towards the back, there is a section, a deep section, where the wheels actually will not touch the ground. The tires will not touch the ground whatsoever. So that is where we're going right now. Now, when you get the propellers underneath the water, it is actually able to steer in the water, which is very, very impressive. And not a lot of vehicles can pull that off. 
And I have been very, very impressed lately with all of these amphibious vehicles that have been coming out of CCM's workshop. And I gotta say, he has been doing an incredible job on the amphibious vehicle front. He really has. And he's been bringing it into a new light and a new realm that we really haven't seen amphibious vehicles shown in in SnowRunner before. Now, also, you could probably use the ramp as an additional packing surface. And I didn't even think about that while we were, uh, while we were running around with this thing earlier. But now that I think about it and now that I see it, it actually makes sense. And it actually looks like it might be usable. Now, I believe we are about at the deep part of the water. So let's go ahead and stop it right there and verify and confirm where our tires are. So let's see. Yep, she's floating. These are a little close, but they are floating. And if we go back up, you can see the propellers actually running right there at the back of the vehicle. Now, once again, that is to show that this thing is fully off the ground and like I said before, floating in the water. Now, you could use this to f basically ferry trucks across gigantic bodies of water in maps like, for example, Imandra, or really any other map, like the lake map, for example. Any map where there are giant bodies of water, you could use this to basically get vehicles from place to place across these maps with much more speed than you ever could before. Much, much, much more speed than you ever could before. And that is frankly one of the coolest freaking things that I have seen so far throughout the life cycle of SnowRunner. So let's go ahead and jump back into the Bertha now. We're gonna go ahead and keep that truck packed and I know that we're not gonna be able to make it through those trees. So we're gonna have to actually back it up and turn it around and drive it around to the mud because I really wanna see how it does in mud. I'm very, very curious because if it's this good in water, one would think that it might be somewhat good in mud too, but then again, that doesn't always play out because some vehicles that are actually really, really good in the water end up not being very good at all in the mud. It just depends on how the vehicle has been set up and primarily how the tires have been programmed. Now, I will say you don't really have much steering angle, so it does take quite a while to turn it around. But really, at the end of the day, it's actually a lot faster than I'm sure its real-life counterpart would be. So the speed of it is plenty acceptable, and you definitely won't be feeling like, oh my god, it's too slow. It's not necessarily Berlay levels of slow. Like, if you guys have seen my videos on the Berlay, you guys know exactly how slow that vehicle is. And even with the top engine, we still sometimes, you know, have... Some people have issues with the speed of it, so let's see if we put it in automatic mode, see if it goes any faster. Now, the weird thing is sometimes when it's actually, like, when it's actually turning, it'll be faster than when you're going straight, especially in the water. And it's also all-wheel drive always on and diff lock always on, but there are some weird behaviors from the wheels sometimes. It's like they're trying to lock, but not fully locking. And so, like, in that respect, I find it to be very weird to drive. I found a winch point under the water. I did not expect to find that at all, and I don't know where it came from, but there you go then. There's that. Are you going to go? Are you going to go? We had to put it in low minus to get it to have any movement because I think right now it's running off of the propellers. I mean, you can see the small wake that they're generating, but I got to really learn how to drive this properly. Like, I got to learn what it likes and what it doesn't like, and it really likes being in deep water. Like, for example, if you're on Smithville Dam and you want to cross that giant reservoir, absolutely go for it. But let's see, now that we're back onto some ground again, we can see how it drives on the ground. And God, looking out of this first-person view, like, cockpit camera is absolutely nuts, mainly because of the fact that, I mean, look at the big bob right there. I am not used to seeing anything in SnowRunner from this high up. Again, I feel like I'm driving a building. No question about it whatsoever. I genuinely feel like I am driving a building. And when you get it out here on land, you realize how incredibly huge it really is. Now, the suspension does take on damage very quickly, so you gotta be careful about that. But, I mean, in the, in the shallow mud, it acts like it's not even there. It really does act like it's not even there. Let's see how it does, well, kind of in the mud lane. It's not even really in the mud lane. I'm going straight to the deep stuff. Dude, that's still only like a quarter of the way up the tire. That's hilarious. That is hilarious how it's only still like a quarter of the way up the tire. And because everything is like so tucked up underneath the vehicle, I can drive over this truck frame, this abandoned truck frame, and it doesn't get upset. Well, it got kind of upset. 
easy. There you go. Not bad. I mean, it really, once again, at the end of the day, you do not have vehicles like this anywhere. Literally anywhere. This is a vehicle that is in a class all its own. It's not a monster truck. It's not, like, it's not just a monster truck. It's not just a hauler. It's not just a, you know, like a semi-truck. It's not just a anything. It's literally its own beast, and it's really in a class of its own. Crazy part is I go up to low plus, and it feels like the wheels just want to spin and dig. But if I go back down to standard low, it's all good. Like, it doesn't even complain at all. Let's see if I can take it through the pond. It doesn't seem like it really wants to because, once again, that turning radius is about the size of, oh god, what, the planet Saturn? So, ooh, that's a big wheel lift. That would be absolutely terrifying in a vehicle of this size. That would absolutely be just gut-wrenchingly terrifying to go up on three wheels in a vehicle this big. Now, I've done it in, like, you know, Jeeps and Toyotas and stuff like that. But something that is literally the size of a house, it would be such an unnerving feeling. I can't even imagine what that would feel like. Now, the dips obstacle, I'm sure it would be fine. I don't really think it has any, like, issues at all with that. But, like, just for the sake of testing, I'm gonna see. Wow. The tires in relation to the dips obstacle are just so incredibly massive that it's... It doesn't even, it doesn't even notice it's there. They're like bumps in the road to it. They're just literally like bumps in the road to this thing. And there's not much that, there's, there's not even much that you would say about like those actual dips. They're not dips, they're bumps. Now, let me go into the garage real quick because it does have a couple of options. Not a ton, but a couple. Now, you do have a uh, fuel tank add-on. Both a, oh my god, you could do large fuel tanks on both sides. You could also do extra front railing and oh okay so the mid railing doesn't really apply if you have the fuel tanks installed got it you have one gearbox you have one engine you have one winch you have one suspension the only thing that you could put on it like i said before is these gigantic fuel tanks which will add a little bit of weight which is exactly what we want going down the bridge jump and yes i'm gonna attempt to do the bridge jump but i genuinely don't know if it's gonna fit and that's really the biggest concern of any with this thing is like wherever you're gonna take it you know will it or will it not fit because if it doesn't fit you're in for some trouble but if it fits don't worry about it you're gonna be fine it barely even fits on the road i doubt it's even gonna barely fit on the bridge man it's way faster than it has any business being out here look at this look at this way faster than it has any business being dude way faster come on oh easy there you go. Honestly, not bad. Just trying to keep my... Trying to keep my tires somewhat on the inside of this rock line. I don't even know if it'll make it up the hill. Like, I'm gonna have to do some tricky winching to get it up the hill. I put it in the lowest of low ranges. Oh, pull. Pull! Pull, please. Oh, my God. This doesn't even want to pull. It doesn't even want to go up the hill. Come on. Oh, there you go. Mega wheel lift, but it's okay. Getting this thing up the hill to the bridge jump is the most difficult thing we've done with it so far. And I don't even know if it'll fit on the bridge jump still. Oh, God, guys. If it does fit, it's going to be so close. All right, I'm going to be really careful here. I'm going to see if... I don't know. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Come on. Well, it doesn't fit, but... Oh, God, I'm going to try. It's like, does it fit? No. Am I still trying? Yes. Well, I seem to have found some sort of a happy medium. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It ain't gonna be much of a bridge jump. It's gonna be a bridge flop. Yeah, it's gonna be a bridge flop. Oh, God, here we go, boys. No! 
Well, we took out some trees. We may have taken out, like, everything on the vehicle as well. But I definitely recommend giving this thing a try if you want something completely out of the ordinary, but also something that could actually be very effective in a campaign scenario. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. And I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you all later, and I hope you guys enjoyed.